another rundown, even more level guides to create. And for once in quite a long time, I'm behind on schedule. Yay. <laughs> Uh, oh well, better late than never, I suppose. With all the Alternate Rundown 4 videos out, it's finally time to cover Alternate Rundown 5 and all of the brutal levels that came with it. 13 more expeditions for us to clear, which means we've got a lot of work to do. So instead of sitting around and doing boring intros, let's drop down into the first expedition and get this journey started. Hello everyone, Professor Scaler here, and welcome to the alternate R5A1 level guide. As always, we're going to be starting off with your recommended loadout, and seeing how this is just the A1 mission of a rundown, we're going to go with the old classic of a bio tracker, a mine deployer, a seafoam launcher, and then any sentry of your choice. And there's not really a whole lot of rhyme or reason behind this particular loadout. It's good for a lot of different situations. You've got the bio tracker there to give you some information, which of course helps you make better decisions in levels. And of course you could tag those enemies in those darker areas to make it easier for your teammates. Mind deploying the seafoam launcher are gonna be really useful for dealing with pretty much every single one of the alarm doors in this level. Plenty of doors we can shut mine and or seafoam to just buy us extra time to work on the scans before enemies finally break into the room. And once they do break in, the mine will go off and kill most, if not every single one of them. And then that sentry is there just to give us a little bit of extra firepower, so if we're taking a little bit too long on the scans, or if we wake up a room with a lot of enemies in it or anything like that, we have something to help us out in case we're not the best with our accuracy. You can swap this loadout up a little bit if you want to, maybe take two, three, or even four sentries if you feel like it. I just like recommending this as it's a classic that I typically default to whenever I don't really know what to bring in with me. Dropping down into level, you'll see that your main objective is to lift the lockdown by using a specific terminal, which is always going to be located inside zone 63. And you and your teammates will be starting off inside zone 61. Inside the zone, there's really not a whole lot to it. On the far western side, you'll be able to find a security door to zone 64, but this door is going to be under lockdown until we, well, lift the lockdown that is currently in place. So we're just going to go throughout this area, dealing with the enemies, collecting resources, and eventually making our way over to the far eastern side where we'll find a security door to zone 62. This security door is just simply a full team scan, so just finish the scan and you can head right on in. And inside zone 62, you'll be able to find your very first bulkhead key, which you will need if you want to deal with the secondary objective in this level. And you'll also be able to find a power cell as well as a generator that'll be tied to the security door to zone 63. Other than that though, not really a whole lot of special stuff about this zone, so make your way through, deal with the enemies. It is a little bit of a darker area, so be a bit cautious if you are newer to the game, but other than that, you should have no trouble whatsoever. And once you find the power cell, you can plug it into the nearby generator in the final room, which will unlock the security door to zone 63, which is going to have a class 2 alarm tied to it. And as you can see with this map overlay, there's only one possible spawn location for these enemies. So I recommend all three of these doors, make sure you have them all shut, but you do not need to mine or seafoam any of them except for this door right here that leads directly into your room. And this one, go on ahead and fully reinforce it with seafoam and place a mine on it, and then have the sentry in the room with you facing towards the door, and you should be good. All of this preparation should give you plenty of time to finish both sets of scans before the enemies get into the room, and once they do get in, the mine will deal with most of them, and you and your teammates and the sentry just have to mow down the last few survivors, and when everything is dead, back up your sentry and you can head into zone 63. Inside there, you'll be able to find even more enemies and resources to collect. There will also be a singular scout patrolling about somewhere in the zone, so be a little bit cautious of her. And somewhere inside the area, you'll be able to find the terminal which you can use to lift the lockdown. Once you go near it, you'll see a command you could put into it in the top left corner, so just hop onto the terminal, use the tab key to autocomplete it once you typed in the first bit of the command, and once the command has been put in, a full team scan will appear next to the terminal, and once you finish it, your main objective for the most part is completed. The lockdown has now been lifted, which means the security door to zone 64 earlier at the beginning of the level has been unlocked, and all we have to do is now make our way to zone 65 or our attraction scan will be waiting for us. So once you've taken care of everything that you need to inside zone 63, backtrack through 63, 62, all the way back into zone 61, and then go to the western side of it where that security door to zone 64 is located at. The security door is just simply going to have a full team scan tied to it, so once you all group up, you can deal with that scan, and then you can open it up and head inside. 
And inside zone 64, you will notice that there are a lot of cocoons all over the ceiling, which indicates that this is a respawn zone. So once your entire team has left the zone completely and gone a few rooms away, enemies inside the zone are going to very quickly start respawning. Although this really isn't too much of an issue at the current moment, because all we need to do is just make our way through zone 64, deal with every single one of the enemies in the rooms, collect the resources, and while you can find your bulkhead door control as well as the door to the secondary objective in this sector, we're going to be taking care of something first, which is the security door to zone 65. As that door it will have a class 3 cluster alarm tied to it, and since it's a regular security door, we could just get it out of the way right now, and then if we're doing a main objective only run, we could just go straight to extraction and finish the level, or if we are doing secondary, we can then just get that security door open, go to the bulkhead door control, plug the key in, and then deal with the secondary objective. As for that security door with the class 3 cluster alarm tied to it, as you can see with this map overlay, there's only one possible spawn location for enemies. So similar to before, we're just going to make sure these four doors are all shut. And then you're going to seafoam this outer door, but you're not going to place a mine on it. And instead, you're going to make sure that this door right here, the one that is down below in that little corridor area, is going to be mined and seafoamed. And as long as we have one or two mines on the wall facing directly towards that door, it will deal with pretty much every single one of the enemies for you. The outer door being seafoam just simply will buy you extra time to work on the scans, so you should be able to finish every single one of them before enemies even get into the room. And if that's not the case, you could just have the seafoam person quickly run over and re-seafoam that inner door, and you should be good. Once everything is set up exactly how you want it, activate the alarm and get to work on the scans, and once this alarm has been finished, then like I said earlier, if you're doing a main objective only run, just open up the door and head to zone 65. The extraction scan will be in the second room, and it is a silent extraction so you don't have to hold out against enemies or anything but if you are going for the secondary objective go back to the bulkhead door control and plug your key into it if you haven't already and then do the scan for the secondary objective and that will unlock the security door over to zone 191 then just go to the far northeastern side of the zone we'll find the bulkhead door and open it up as there's no scan tied to it Upon entering into zone 191, you'll see that your secondary objective is to collect six plant samples. And there's actually a total of seven of them in this sector, and they will be randomly scattered throughout zones 192, 193, and 194. So one of the first things I recommend you do upon entering into zone 191 is heading to the terminal to the far eastern side of the initial room and listing how many plant samples are in each of those three zones. Because sometimes you'll get something like a 3, 2, and 2 split, which means you have to go into all three of the zones to complete your objective, but other times you might get lucky and get something like a 3, 1, 3 split, which means you only have to go into two of the three zones. So check that real quick just to see where you have to go first before you start really doing anything else. Because the three security doors in this zone to those other areas are all locked and require a power cell to be plugged into a nearby generator in order to open them up. And while there are three different generators in this zone, there's only a single power cell, which means you can only head into one at a time, as the other power cells in the level are actually located in those side zones. And the other thing about it is all three of these security doors have class 3 sustain alarms tied to them. Two of the alarm doors are in the exact same room, which means the set for them is pretty much the same as each other, and the other one, while it's on the same room, is exactly two rooms away from that area, which means that the doors between those two main rooms are shared between every single one of the alarms. Which doesn't really make setting up for the alarms all that challenging, it just means you have to be a little bit smarter with it. As you can sort of see with this map, these are the locations of the alarm doors, and these two doors right here in particular are the ones I'm referring to. Both of these doors can be utilized for all three of the alarms, or rather, I guess I should say for any of the three, but once you use it once, you obviously cannot use it again. So like I said, hop onto a terminal, figure out which one of the two, or if you have to go into all three of the zones, you know, figure that information out first. And then once you know, go throughout the entirety of the zone, deal with every single one of the enemies, cautious as there is a scout somewhere inside this area, and then look around for resources, of course, as well as that initial power cell. Once you find it, plug it into one of the generators, depending on which zones you have to go into, and then you can start setting up for the alarms. When it comes to dealing with the very first alarm, if you're heading into zone 194, which is the southern door, your map overlay is going to look more like this. As you can see, there are two main locations enemies can spawn from. When it comes to this southern door, I would recommend you just shut it, mine it, and see foam it, as this is the only time this door can be utilized. And then when it comes to the two northern doors, you can either preserve both of them if you want to save them for the two northern alarms, if you have to deal with both of them, or you could just simply shut one of the two doors, mine it, and see foam it, and then leave the other one open so you can preserve it for later. As for your sentry, you could place it down wherever you want, and you should be good. 
If you're heading into one of the two northern zones first though, your initial map overlay is going to look like this. There's only one possible spawn location for enemies, and again, it's these two doors here. So I would recommend leave the outer door open and then just shut my SC from the inner door and have your sentry somewhere nearby it on the inside of your room, and you should be okay for the most part. Once you finish the first alarm, you can open up the security door and head into the zone, and zone 192, 193, and 194 are all pretty much the exact same. There will be regular strikers as shooters, there will be a single scout patrolling about, there will be plant samples for you to collect, there will be resources to resupply with, and there will be a singular power cell which you can grab and take out with you and then plug into one of the other generators so you can then head into the next zone. And at that point you're just simply rinse and repeating. The only other thing to really take note of is that if you open up one of those two northern alarm doors and you have to head into the other one that's up there, keep in mind that since you open up a new zone there is a new spawn location for enemies, but thankfully there is also another door which you can utilize, so go on ahead, shut mine and see from that door, and you should be good. And that's really all there is to the secondary objective. Once you open up the two or all three of the zones, again, depending on your RNG, and you've gone into them and collected the six plant samples that you need, your secondary objective will be completed, and all that's left for you to do is backtrack into zone 64, go to the far western side to that security door to 65, which you've already taken care of, and then just make your way into extraction. Once you get back to extraction and you get that scan all the way to 100%, you are done and you have completed alternate R5A1. And that's all there is to it. The original Rundown 5 was the introduction of respawn zones to the game, and the initial release of the Rundown, well, it was a bit over the top. As with most new mechanics, 10 Chambers wanted to utilize it fairly often to properly test it and get some feedback from the community. In the original R5A1 though, the starting zone as well as the first zone in the secondary sector were also respawn zones, including the one that's currently a respawn zone in this version, which caused a lot of brand new players to suffer more than they really should have, and returning players who were a bit more skillful found it more of a tedious mechanic than really anything else. Thankfully, 10 Chambers listened to the community, and within a week or two of the initial release, they removed a lot of the respawn zones from multiple levels to make things a little bit more reasonable. As always though, thank you for watching this video all the way to the very end. I do hope that it was able to provide you with some assistance in beating this level. If you have any tips or tricks this level that you want to share, any questions for me, or you just have something in general that you would like to say, please do let me know down in the comments. Hit that like button if you enjoy the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more from me, and if you want to join my lovely community, there's a link to my Discord down in the description, as well as some other links you might be interested in. Among those links being one to the official GTFO merch store, which as always, I highly recommend you check out if you're a fellow GTFO enthusiast and you're looking to pick up some sweet merch. Until next time, have fun and good luck while continuing your journey through what many consider to be the hardest rundown in the game, and hopefully I'll see all you wonderful people in the next video.